So I'm out here camping again, and uh, today's video I thought I would talk about the 70 to 200 lens and why I think it's the best portrait lens that there is. So stick around. So why would I say this is the best portrait lens? Well, in a little while I'm going to try to grab one of the kids and demonstrate how quickly you can adjust your um, field of view. And that's what's important when you're shooting portraits, especially when you're working with people. It's great to have an 85 millimeter lens, but you'll be constantly moving around to get different framing. With a 70 to 200, you can quickly use the zoom to change the entire composition of your image, and the subject doesn't even know it. I've talked about this before when I've reviewed some of the other lenses that we do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to grab one of these kids here that are uh, camping with us, and just give you a quick demonstration of how it would work. Okay, wish me luck, because uh, I don't know if they're gonna wanna be on camera. So guess who didn't want to be on camera? I don't blame them. Uh, we were camping and they were a little disheveled in the morning and they came back over to the trailer and they were like, I said, all right, one of you guys want to help me with this video? They're like, no, thank you. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm back home and I'm going to talk about the 70 to 200. So this is it right here. And this is the one that I use, but it, I'm not, this isn't a review of this lens. What I'm talking about is this focal length. And if you shoot with a crop sensor camera, Something like uh, Sigma's 50 millimeter to 100 millimeter 1.8 lens is a fantastic option if you're shooting with one of those cameras. It's a perfect lens and it almost matches this focal length, but it's a 1.8 aperture. So uh, on a crop sensor, that's going to give you something very similar to a 2.8 aperture on a full frame camera. But there are options out there if you don't shoot full frame. A 70 to 200 on a crop sensor is a little bit long, I think. The thing that I love about this for portraits is you can get full body shots and then zoom in quickly. So as we're talking, I'm gonna drop images in, put an image, one on either side of me, and one will be the zoomed in one and one will be the one a little wider, taken within seconds of each other with this lens. And that's one of the things I love about it is you can quickly, without even letting your subject know what you're doing, adjust the zoom and you can move the composition around and while you're interacting with people. And that's the thing I found. And you'll notice there's a lot of children in these images. These are all photos I've taken of, you know, family portraits and things like that. And when you're working with kids, they don't want to sit still. They don't want to necessarily do what you want them to do. You know, they're busy moving around. So you have to have some flexibility. If you're shooting adults and you want to get a little more you know, you, you can take your time. An adult will sit there for a second if you want to change lenses, but I just found over the years that this works well. The Sigma lens I was talking about is $1,100. This lens, when I bought it, was about $1,500. The Canon, Sony, Nikon versions, they're expensive also. Um, some of them are over $2,000. You can find used ones, which I would not hesitate to buy a used lens. Uh, I do it all the time. And in fact, when I was building out my M50 kit, I bought a lot of used lenses for it because I, you know, I had nothing for that camera and I was able to pick up some decent lenses at good prices because I was willing to buy used. So don't hesitate to buy something used, um, especially from a reputable camera shop like B&H Photo or Adorama in New York City. They ship anywhere and, you know, they're great places to buy used gear. So some of these images that I'm showing you as I'm talking are of, you know, portrait sessions and you know, these people just show up, they really don't know what to expect, and you try to make them comfortable as a photographer. You're talking to them, and as you're shooting, you know, they're moving around, you ask them to do this, you ask them to do that. Um, kids will sit still for a second, so you gotta be ready. So you might have to adjust, you know, the composition to get everybody in frame or to zoom in on one person. And a, a lot of times, I, I found once I was in the flow of shooting people, I didn't want to stop and say, hold on a second, I need to go change this lens out. Especially if I had you know, somebody with me who was holding a reflector or a softbox, or I was doing it by myself and I had a reflector and I, it was just too much going on. And I found simplicity was the way to go for me. If that's the type of photography you wanna do, or you maybe wanna do family portraits, it's very popular in, uh, I don't know, in my neighborhood and suburban neighborhoods, you know, people like to get their Christmas pictures done by a local photographer, or maybe they want, you know, there's a special event, a communion, a graduation, a sweet 16s, you know, bar bat mitzvah, they're all these type of things. Maybe they don't just want the event pictures. They want to have, you know, something else, a little more personal. And that's where this type of photography is great because you're, you're working in an outdoor environment a lot of times, maybe something picturesque in your town. 
And you as the photographer don't want to spend all day doing it and you want to get the shots you need quickly and you don't want to have the people sitting around while you are. So you want it to be a very quick, you know, kind of, you know, thing. You want it to, to, to move smoothly and quickly and you want to look professional and you want to sound professional and the images should look professional when you're done. So when you spend the money on a lens like this, this, you literally could use only this lens and get everything you need in portraits. And as you see from these images, you know, you can get a lot of different looks with this and then your editing is going to finish them off. So that's where you create a style. I don't know if you could tell from these images here, many of them have a warm autumn kind of tone to them. And that's what I was going for. These were all images that I shot in the fall, you know, foliage, uh, we were coming up on the holiday season. So I wanted to give it that warm, cozy type of look. Maybe you're in a place that has beaches and you want to give it a bright, colorful look, but that's going to be up to you when you edit. But you really want to have the best image to work with. So you want a nice, sharp image, and that's the most important thing. So, you know, these type of lenses, when you spend a little more money up front, you're going to have good images to work with. And, and that's really the key once you get into the computer to start editing. Uh, you want great raw material to work with. So I was messaging with one of my friends this morning, my friend Anthony, who's also a photographer. He does event portraits and Sweet 16s and all sorts of different types of photography. And I said, okay, so what lens for portraits are you going to use? Now I know he has a bag full of lenses. And uh, he said, absolutely, without a doubt, the 70 to 200. He said, then if there's groups, maybe I would use a 35 1.4. So I didn't ask Eric this time because I have a feeling he would have said his 135 or his 85 millimeter. Maybe I'm wrong. I know he does have the 70 to 200 with him when he does shoot portraits, uh, but he prefers to shoot his primes. This is just my opinion of this, and maybe he'll do a video on what he thinks. For the type of photography I like to do, and part of shooting portraits is it's completely different than landscape photography in that you, with landscape photography, you're kind of by yourself and thinking and you're out in nature or wherever you are in a city and it's, you're just trying to get a good exposure and you have time. Portrait photography, you have to be a little bit of a people person. You have to be willing to interact and you want to make people comfortable. You want to, you know, joke around a little bit, make them, you know, because it's, it's odd to have your picture taken. Just like I'm sitting here staring at a camera right now, it's weird and it's not something that's natural to a lot of people. So when they have, and especially this, so when I throw it on here, now when I throw the hood on this, you have this, what looks like a cannon pointed at you, you know? So you have this big thing pointed in your face and you know, this is what they see. Okay, here's, you know, do this, do that. So it's, it's, it's a little odd. So what I think is, you know, you have to be loose and, and you have to have fun with it. And the less you have to fumble around with your gear, the better off everybody's going to be. Your subjects will be more at ease. You'll be more comfortable shooting. You won't be worrying about it. And the more you do it with one set of gear, the, the more you're going to be able to see what you can get with that piece of gear. So for me, that lens was the 70 to 200. I knew what I was getting. I knew what apertures were going to work, what they were going to look like when I was finished. Uh, you know, I, I'm very comfortable with it. And my camera setup, I knew what I needed for that. Once you get all that dialed in, and now it's just taking pictures. And that's where you can get creative and, and make some nice images. I'll throw some links in the bottom to the lens that I use, the lens that Eric uses, and also to that Sigma lens, because that Sigma lens has nothing but stellar reviews. And if you're shooting with a crop sensor camera, you know, I'm talking about like um, the Canon T-Series or the um, Nikon 7500, uh, the, the 5600, I think it is now, like that level of camera, Sigma makes them for different mounts, and um, it's 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 a great lens to use with those cameras. And those cameras will give you fantastic images also. You don't have to have a full frame camera to make beautiful portraits. So don't worry about that. So why don't I use my 24 to 70 for portraits? Well, I do when there's groups and I have a lot of people, but for four or five people and under, I will step back and still use the 70 to 200 because when I can zoom in on someone a little bit, it pulls the background out of focus completely and you get that nice out of focus area and it's just a it's just a better look in my opinion uh, the 24 to 70 is a great lens all around lens and if that's the only lens you have in your bag and that's all you can get right now that's a perfect lens and you can do this but if you're looking for that portrait lens the one that you really want to get those special images where you're going to create your own look and really get some 
nice tight images of people where you can then pull out and get that creamy out of focus area. I think the 70 to 200 is your best bet. Thumbs up if you like the video. It helps us out here on the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do for more videos like this. And we will see you in the next one.